for someone to understand your praise and your worship and your love for God, they really have to have a grasp or have an idea of your testimony. I used to be the ringleader because I would have watched all the tutorials from the day before. The thing about healing is it doesn't just stop, it's a continual process. I remember I kept saying, I don't believe God brought me through all this pain um, for nothing. And if I was loved the way I wanted to be loved, if I had my dad around all the time, like if everything was fine and dandy, like I wouldn't have like sought after God in the way I did. Hi guys, welcome to my Chunk TV and welcome to another chit chat episode when I get real about life experiences, give you a bit of advice and put my own spin on it. So it's been a minute, been on a production break. I've had an amazing time away from work. I've still been working, I do some client work, you, some of you may know that, but I've, I haven't done anything MCTV for about a month now. A much needed break after a very very busy year um, and we just literally finished off why do we love love so after every big production and that is one of our bigger productions um, we take a production break to just rejuvenate to revitalize and you know come back fresh and ready to go so that's how I'm feeling right now and um, today is my birthday well hopefully this video will be up on my birthday but happy birthday to myself. I was thinking about how to kind of make this comeback or what video to do to reset the tone on this channel. Uh, so I have been doing a lot of reflecting and just looking over my life. September for me was a month of gratitude. I was intentionally writing in my gratitude journal at least every day or at least every other day to kind of just thank God for like the provision in my life and the things that you know I, I appreciate and and the month of September was a really great month because by appreciating the things I have already it, all, it created this like energy of contentment and happiness and genuine joy in like who I am and where I am right now and it wasn't that constant or oh, where am I going next and the fact that I didn't have work um MCTV work to do as well gave me a real chance to just really really reflect and it be my birthday today. Well, when this video goes up, it'll be my birthday. I'm filming it a day before. But just it being my birth month in general has just made me so grateful. Just looking back 23 years of life and um, the things God has brought me through. Okay, the light is back now. I'm looking like a ghost. Are we going to keep doing this? Really? For someone to understand your praise and your worship and your love for god they really have to have a grasp or have an idea of your testimony because no matter if i sit here from morning till night no one will still get the, the depths of the things that god has really brought me through for those of you that are joining us for the first time i'm a christian and i really really love god and where that love stems from is literally as a result of the many journeys that god has taken me through and I think let's let's throw it all the way back to to the start where I where I come from. I've always been a Christian. I was raised in a Christian household, and always known about God. I've always known about Jesus. I was very enthusiastic actually as a young child about God, and um, I was always asking questions. Like when I found out that people could speak in tongues in church, I was I asked my mom what it was, and she told me obviously they were speaking in tongues, speaking in the spirit. And I was, I was like, when do I get to do that? You know, I was very like eager to find out about who this God was. And from a young age, I was operating in a prophetic. At the time, I didn't know it was a prophetic, but I used to have very, very vivid dreams that like I could predict what was going to happen. Well, God was predicting through me or God was sending down messages about my family um, through me. And I would tell my mom and she would be so bewildered, like this young child, like where is all of this coming from? And funnily enough, that's what kind of instilled the spirit of fear in me because I was seeing things beyond my age like i remember one time I, I i'm pretty sure i saw an angel like it was outside my house um near like you know in nigerian i grew up in nigeria so in nigerian houses you have like the area where you put all the cars um well we did anyway like the garage area and i i saw like a white um a huge bean and i believe it was an angel like i was seeing things in the spiritual realm and as a little girl that scared me having no 
um, spiritual training or spiritual guidance as to, okay, this is the prophetic and this is what you need to do. I just remember praying, um, going to this, um, prophetess of my mom and, you know, I was kind of ears, eavesdropping and she was just saying certain things about, about myself and like how to kind of protect me from certain things. But no one actually like said, okay, like let's start your training now. And I guess it was because I was quite young. Where did things kind of start to go left? So I think the first major disaster that kind of happened in my life as a young child is that I was um, unwillingly opened up sexually. So I was molested as a child. My mom used to drop me at her friend's house until she got back from work. So she was a civil servant at the time. Until she got back from work, picked us up and whatnot, myself and my brother. And there were, I don't want to give too much detail yet because I'm going to do a whole other video about my kind of sexual assault experience and stuff. But just to, it's part of my testimony. So I think I was age, I actually can't remember it like the specific age, but I know I came to this country at nine. So it must have happened around like six, seven, something like that. And these guys were older than me. Maybe when my brother was playing game with the other guys in the living room, there would be one particular one that would just take me into the room and just do all manners of things to me. I obviously didn't understand at the time what was actually going on, but I kind of just went along with it. That Oh, this is what they do in the movies. I thought it was a normal thing. And, um, this kind of happened up until my brother walked in one time and it was like, anyway, when I do speak on it in another video, I will give more details of what kind of happened after. But that was, I think, step one in terms of like the brokenness that I'd experienced in my life. And then, so growing up now, I came to this country when I was 10 years old, literally a day after my 10th birthday. I came to England the year before that on holiday. So, I kind of had a taste or feel of what it was like. So that was just a vacation, but this time it was to live. And I was so upset, like, I cried that night. And that was the first night my dad ever smacked me. Like, my dad never, ever, ever put his hand on me. But that was the first night that my dad smacked me because he just didn't understand why I was so upset. I was, I felt like I was leaving my life behind, um, my friends behind. And I feel like t till today, that's why I am still so very Nigerian because I never wanted to leave home. So like home has always followed me. Home is where the heart is. So like, I feel like that's why I'm still, still so Nigerian. Um, but here we are. <laughs> I'm very grateful though, because obviously this is the country where I've gotten to explore my talents and stuff. So like everything happens for a reason. All things work together for the good of those that love God came to this country now and the idea of like faith, idea of race, idea of so many different things, idea of beauty, so different, you know, coming to this country and discovering that I was black. I remember when Chimamanda did, she said this and so many people came for her, but it's, it's, it's a genuine experience for kids that have grown up in African nations and then moved over to the diaspora because it's so different. You get treated differently based on the color of your skin. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, you're all black. You know, you're distinguished based on like ethnicity and stuff like that. So I discovered I was black. I discovered I wasn't so attractive because in Nigeria, being big is a good thing. But in this country, it's like a sign of unhealthiness. And back in Nigeria, being big is a sign of wealth. Like you've got um good money for good food you're you're feeding your kids well if your kids are skinny in nigeria it's like ah they're a bit malnourished like what's going on do you need money to feed them that kind of thing so i was very very proud of my fatness i was proud of who i was um but coming to this country at age 10 my accent is different um my skin color is different my weight is different compared to all the slim girls in my class you know everything was just different and i was trying to like find my feet, find my beauty, like, am I beautiful anymore? I feel like for a long time, I really didn't feel beautiful. Like, you guys know in my Let's Talk Beauty and Self-Confidence video, I was very insecure about my nose, you know, the only black girl in the class, and being big. I feel like for a long time, that left me, like, searching and wanting to feel validated by others, and in particular, um, as I began, began to experience puberty, that now transcended into, like, seeking validation from the opposite sex so from guys i don't know if you guys remember that period where bashment was the thing it's slowly slowly coming back now weirdly enough but there was a period 2012 
oh nine when i was just in my teens um so 13 14 15 bashment was raining and i remember every day after school my friend and i and neely that was that's twiggy we started this channel together twiggy and chunky as a twiggy and chunky show hopefully you guys will, will see her maybe this year next year will it be this year will it be next year you be single forever jesus so we were pretty much what i would call jobless we had school but you know them ones you do your homework and then what next so we would chill put on bashment practice our dance moves i used to be the ringleader because i would have watched all the tutorials from the day before i'll be teaching and nearly this is how you bend over bend over bend over bend over that's my favorite dance quickly quickly i started to learn i guess sexual attraction in a sense that i found myself not feeling beautiful enough not attractive just for me and then i it verged over to the need to be sexually attractive so living in an area where it is predominantly white folk i felt ugly no attention and then i think the, the summer that kick that kick started it was the summer that i went to stay with my cousins and um, I started to meet up with their friends and, you know, started to discover that, okay, like, I actually have, I have body, you know, with the whole bashment thing as well, shoes, all about whining, da 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 All of a sudden, it was, it was great to have assets, like, guys fancied that. So I started to believe I was beautiful because I was sexually attractive. And um, it was that summer, actually, um, that I was reopened sexually. So age six seven unwillingly open sexually but in my teens that summer was the summer when i was open sexually willingly so there's a difference i would say that's when i became sexually active and that was the beginning of, of many many years of just constantly seeking validation from guys and i i would like to call it my intention seeking and i believe that's what i i would like to describe that as my whole phase although it wasn't really like i was a ho-ho because it wasn't like multiple guys at the same time it was like the phase with this guy would finish so it would be on to the next one and on to the next one but although i was hoeing around or just being a teenager exploring myself sexually i was always i always had it at the back of my mind that young girl who i used to be the girl that was walking in the prophetic the girl that would um see crazy visions from god and be able to explain them and you know the girl that was destined for great things like i always had it in my head that god wanted to use me although back then i wasn't ready out of being fearful of what i was seeing and out of not being trained and trained well enough i always knew it was there deep down so like although like i was um can i be a bit crude for a second although in terms of like sexual stuff i was like giving head getting head um what else that little rubbing thing sometimes this is getting to although i was kind of just um exploring sexually i never actually went all the way to having sex because i i i for some reason that was a bigger deal to me like when the penis actually enters the vagina you become one so i always knew my limits if that makes sense and i counted a lot of different guys and like it was sad because although they wanted my body like they wanted nothing more and they wouldn't hide that they would be very explicit with that and i was okay with it but deep down like i was like ah, why does nobody see me as like better than this okay so i need to go back a little bit and as well as like searching for myself and searching for someone to validate my beauty that now leading me into this whole phase i also believe my dad leaving was also a part of that so my dad moved to Niger moved back to nigeria so he lived with us up until my late teens i think and then he went to nigeria so that was also part of it and again that would be a whole other video daddy issues and how i came to kind of solve um or heal from that but i think i was also searching for my dad in every single guy and searching for that kind of father figure or male protector kind of figure although i had my brother but you know you know teenage stuff you're all growing you're trying to be independent you know you can't there's just certain levels of love you know that you there's only so much that you can there's only so much that you can receive from your siblings so i was looking outside for that sort of father figure but looking for love in the wrong places 
and this carried on until my university and um i i still felt like i was in christ i felt like celibacy was i was still celibate as long as i wasn't actually having sex and i was just doing little bits here and there god understands kind of thing I, hormones are raging through my body it's okay for me to just do this every now and again and in university i quickly encountered guys again that just were just lost in after me and i didn't understand what it was why are they lost in after me and it will always be a thing of they would come understand that i wanted to keep my virginity we would do bits that was a cycle would do bits and then um they'll realize okay this girl's actually not letting off and then they would walk away so I, i felt really 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 broken you know that nobody wanted me except i was giving them sex and i think the turnaround point was the last guy i was with in university no that was at the end of first year this guy prayed that oh I want a a guy that's Christian like me. I want him to be celibate, but you know, still have a nasty side. Yes, I prayed that to God, and that he would be a scientist and he would be from Edo State. Like, and it seems like God answered my prayer because lo and behold, this tall, dark, and handsome walks into my life, and he seems intentional. He seems great. Um, we end up like um messing around. Never really took me out on dates. We just used to do some hanky panky I, I can't even remember how the relationship like fizzled out but i just remember there was a day when i told him i'm done but i was kind of hoping for him to fight for me like no let's work it out and he was just like mm, okay and that was how he left so i was really like hurt that oh god but i thought i prayed for this so why why didn't this work out and that's when i think i started doing a lot of soul searching and it was literally a day after i broke up with him that i put that video up or i did the video let's talk celibacy my first celibacy video and i made a decision in that moment that i would stop giving my body away to guys because for so long they had i had been seeking validation in that way and enough is enough kind of thing and that i wanted to preserve myself for the one that god has actually destined for me to be with so i started to see myself i started to value myself a bit more just as someone that is more than a sex object for for a very long time that's how i felt and it seems like i'm focusing on that but it, that was the central of my life you know i had school i had friends but i was always very obsessive about the idea of like love relationships because i think for a very long time i just didn't experience experience that and i and what you don't experience you kind of crave because you want to see what it's like on that side in that year I went on what I would like to call my season of singleness. I literally just said, "Right God, it's me and you." And I really want to just heal um from all my relationship hurt. And from relationship hurt, God started revealing so many different things about myself and why I am the way I am, you know. I thought, you know, I was just an angry woman, but I didn't realize that I was very snappy. I was very um intolerant of people as a result of some of the things that had gone on like in my childhood i.e. the molestation when i was really young that opened up a a web of like hypersexuality in my life and i didn't realize that was why i always wanted to you know not necessarily have sex but be fondled and it's as a result of the plain trauma because that's exactly what happened when i was younger and for some reason that was intimacy for me in my adult relationships so god was revealing and peeling back and peeling back and peeling back the layers then he revealed oh daddy issues i didn't even know i was angry at my dad until those moments when god was actually revealing to me that i don't think you've forgiven your dad there's some resentment that he left you and did it and this is what you know there's just so many different things and it's not like he left me you know he went to work you know but it's still like but daddy wasn't there hmm. and then um okay i need a moment and um oh god i don't want to mess up my makeup i still got somewhere to go sorry guys i just wasn't expecting that one to hit me that way and um oh. Why does this always happen? I thought I was about to go in like a fighter. <laughs> okay, cool. Wow, that that hit something in me when I said that. I thought I was healed, and another guy came into my life, and it's everything I want. You know me, I like my Nigerian guys, so it's a bit of a fob. 
but still very like polished because he's been in this country for a while and we're both creatives and at that time I was starting to birth the ideas of MCTV so I thought oh god has brought me a purpose partner as well as a life partner um because he was very like clear about where he wanted to go like he just wanted he wanted to get married and stuff um so I was thinking oh this is great this is my third year of uni so straight after uni you know those myths that you tell yourself straight after uni I'm gonna get married have babies we're gonna build our empire together and quickly God revealed through like my actions and him then as a result walking away through my actions I realized that I wasn't actually fully healed and the thing about healing is it doesn't just stop it's a continual process in a sense that okay I might be better today than I was yesterday but even if I'm with this person today I need to wake up every morning and be intentional about loving him and be intentional about forgiving him be intentional about my actions my emotions my emotions used to rule me and as a result I couldn't sustain relationships so it was like surface level deeper 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 um and God was just peeling back those layers and as a result I became a better person and I feel like with him it had to hurt for for me to like mo you need to be more intentional about this you need to be more aware of your trauma like i've told you but you need to be not that it's at the forefront of your mind every day but you really need to be aware of yourself so that's what kick-started um 14 days of love and the valentine's event that i did the year after and even now like god has revealed another layer to where he wants me to take that and my biggest prayer this year was that God would reveal the woman that he has called me to be in his kingdom as in purpose. Like I know I enjoy media and I know I enjoy putting shows together, but what really is my calling? Like who has God called me to? And I remember having a, a, a brief vision when I asked God, like, who am I? And I remember just seeing like older women just crying on my shoulders. And in that moment, the emotion was so the emotion was so intense, like I felt it. And I've always been a very empathetic person. And I realized in that moment, that's why God gave me that 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 trait. And it's, it's to support my gift of prophecy as well, so that I can feel things and sense what people, the burdens that people are carrying as well, so I can then help them through that. And I remember I kept saying, I don't believe God brought me through all this pain. Um, for nothing I really don't believe God brought me through all this pain just for me to to put a camera on and be saying hi guys welcome back to my channel there's something bigger here and that passion kept burning inside of me and even in these moments when I was away from MCTV I kept praying purpose 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 and again God showed me another vision that reminded me or emphasized exactly what it is that I'm meant to do that I'm called to do because this is a ministry it's not just talent your talent is meant to glorify God and you glorify God by 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 spreading his word by by pulling people out of their out of their burdens by pulling people out of their their lowly places and helping them it's like Christianity is one beggar showing another beggar where they got bread so it's not that you get healed and then it stops there that healing has to be passed on and I remember going to some, a, a, a dinner party or something like that. And they said, tell me who you are, but don't put um, presenter, for example. Don't say your, your job title. Who are you? And in that moment, I was like, hmm. I was like, who am I? And I realized that I'm a woman on a journey of healing, healing others as I go along. And I just thank God because... In those moments when I experienced brokenness, and you guys know from my university testimony as well, experiencing anxiety, depression, just so many things messing with my mind, that period of feeling lonely, those were the moments when I found God, and it makes me emotional every time I think about it. Those were the moments, because if everything went well for me, you know, if I, if I got to study medicine when I wanted to, um... If I got a boyfriend, if I was loved the way I wanted to be loved, if I had my dad around all the time, um, if I was never molested, like if everything was fine and dandy, like I wouldn't have like sought after God in the way I did. And everyone's testimony is so different. But I think this is what makes mine special in a sense that I can relate with every single person out there that's been through hurt. I can relate with every single person out there that's been through trauma, you know? Like, and that's why I'm not a judgmental person. Like, even though I'm a Christian and I see somebody wilding out, like, I get it. Like, 
and it might not even be linked to trauma directly but I see you like I, I feel I, I get you you know I, I know why you're doing that or I, I can I can I have a feeling or I know why I did that so I know there's got to be something behind your actions as a result I've become a very understanding person and it's like as I un, as I continue to understand this mantle that God has placed on me I I I finally get it like I finally get why God had to bring me through those levels and bring me through those things that I went through you know and as they always say God only gives his biggest battles to his his strongest soldiers and even this year was very emotional year for me on YouTube because so many things were happening it just felt like I was saying all the wrong things it just seemed like I was just doing things to ruin my career and it was just like God what is going on and it was in those moments that I did even more soul searching and it's like you, you, you're you're getting there but you're not quite there yet like you need to actually discover what is your calling and that's what I've been doing and I'm, I'm actually so grateful to God you know sometimes you pray that God reveal this to me reveal my purpose but you don't get to tell God how that happened sometimes your purpose is revealed through embarrassing things like publicly embarrassing things or your purpose is revealed through insults like oh my god like it, it will feel like someone just came and rubbed poo all over your body you want it to be some people want it to be glamorous that you know someone just called you the pastor just called you up or um someone just gave you a job and you found your purpose boom no sometimes it's when you're crying sometimes it's when you're in a low place sometimes it's when you feel like you're buried i've recently been watching this amazing um um series let me not lie i've only watched one episode but i need to watch the rest um planted not buried like the theme of my life literally i have experienced so much darkness you know but god has always been there just pouring a little bit of rain pouring a little bit of fertilizer you know just growing underneath all the roots all the roots all the disappointment all the hurt from friendships so many layers guys i I told you like if i if i start in this video there's no way i can finish the, like there's no way I can I can really explain or expand on the depth of the things that I've been through but I can only kind of try to summarize um what God has brought me through friendships yeah I used to be someone that was very out disappointment was almost my middle name someone would always be disappointing me and through that I found that I needed to stop placing the idea of perfection on people that people will always falter even I've probably hurt one or two people along my journey probably even more disappointed people disappointment is a part of life but when you're whole in christ it's easier to shake it off not that it's not that it won't hurt but it's easier to kind of move forward okay you're human you're you're infallible and that's not a bad thing because i'm also infallible therefore i'm not going to place that perfection on christ on you i'm going to be whole in christ and only you know expect perfection from him is the only one that doesn't change is the only one that doesn't falter yeah my university journey i think that was the one that stamped me in christ doesn't mean i became perfect in those moments if you really want to see the depth of my university journey go and watch my university testimony itself but that was what stamped me in christ that was when i really experienced god for myself it wasn't just spoon-fed religion at that point it was me actively seeking god and then him revealing himself unto me and I legit thank God. 23 years of life is not easy. It's not small. It's something to be so grateful to God for. That's two decades and I'm now onto my third one. And I am so grateful to God for my journey. Although it was painful, although there were disappointing moments, although it felt like I was buried, but God was just planting and planting and preparing me for the things that he, he has called me to do. And he was equipping me um, for where I was going. And I'm just so thankful because something that blew my mind recently um two months ago i went fully freelance and um a girl had contacted me months in advance that they wanted me to speak at their at their event called through him alone theme of of that was how god helps you through things and initially when she told me about it i thought i was just going to talk about my university journey and in the moment when i was actually at that show i realized that wait this is the month that i actually took the plunge and went freelance with my craft and it was just like whoa God actually knew, even though she contacted me, contacted me ages ago, God actually knew that this was the month that I was going to have stepped out and I would have, I would be testifying to how faithful he had been from when I had stepped out. I don't know if you guys can catch that. 
and it's like you actually know every single day god like you are so amazing you know my 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 today from my tomorrow and you know how to order my steps until i get there and i was just so wow we've discovered a new song and it's by lily perez it's amazing god and i just get so emotional every time i sing that because god actually does really really mind-blowing things and I've rediscovered my worship. Like I'm so eager to to showcase that to the world. Like I'm not the most world's most perfect singer, but I know there is some ministration in there that God wants me to to pull out. And I'm just so excited for the next season of my life because I'm flowing, I'm flowing, I'm flowing, I'm filling myself up with so much of God so I can so I can overflow. And I'm just so excited. Like I never that teenager I mean, she had it at the back of her mind, but she really didn't know the depths of where or the height of where God wanted to take her. She really didn't know her purpose. She didn't really know. She didn't know she was going to be doing media. No clue. No clue. She didn't know that she was going to one day feel whole. She didn't know that one day she was going to feel loved. Um, she didn't know that one day she would feel happy with her beauty. She didn't know that one day she would be rocking her natural hair unapologetically. She didn't know that one day she would be more accepting of her skin colour. She didn't know. But God knew. And to me, that's just amazing. So this is my testimony. This is how I came to Christ. This is how I am flowing right now in Christ. And I, I'm just the most grateful person right now, like... God does absolutely mind blowing things and I'm I'm grateful that he, that he's doing some of that through me. Like I didn't choose to be chosen, he just chose me, you know, and with his grace covering all of my shortcomings and still continues to use me. So, yeah, guys, that was a lengthy one, but we had to kind of get through the layers and there's probably so much that I missed out. Um, but hopefully you know, that gives you guys an idea of where my worship comes from, where my praise comes from, where my love for God comes from. Because when there was no one else, it was him picking me out of the miry clay. Amazing God, amazing God, you do mind-blowing things. 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 Amazing God. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like this video if you liked it. Share it with your friends. Comment down below on the things I spoke about. And subscribe to this channel for more. Until next time guys. Peace and love. Peace and chunks.